So, you know, most people who work with PD-1 antibodies and practitioners in the U.S. now who use it in lung cancer and head and neck cancer and kidney cancer and Merkel cell cancer and soon squamous cancer and also Hodgkin's disease, they would agree that PD-1 antibodies or PD-L1 antibodies are pretty well tolerated. Again, if you look at the critical parameter of how often do you have to stop someone because of side effects, it's less than 10% for nivolumab in this study, whereas if you look at this for ipilimumab, over 40% rate of stopping treatment because of some toxicity that's treatment related. That's a big number. And I think docs are gonna look at those numbers and say, boy, I much rather, would much rather give my patient a PD-1 antibody as adjuvant therapy than ipilimumab. Um, remember, in stage three resected melanoma, half the patients are gonna be cured just sitting there. So when I talk to patients and I tell them about talk to them about treatment and toxicity, they have to weigh what's the likelihood of having a side effect versus what's the likelihood I'm cured doing nothing. So especially for like a stage 3A patient, probably 75% of them are cured just sitting there and won't require treatment. So the most important thing is A, that your treatment not be that toxic in the adjuvant mode. It's a little different than in the metastatic mode. And hopefully in the future we'll be able to choose the patients we want to treat where we can concentrate on those with the highest risk of relapse. And I, I'll be able to look at a patient with stage 3B resected melanoma and say, listen, you, your biomarker, whatever that is, says that your risk of relapse is like 0.5% over the next five years. We're not going to treat you with any potentially toxic treatment. Versus the patient, well, you have a 50% risk of relapse or a 60% risk of relapse. I think it's appropriate to treat you with a therapy that has a modest amount of side effects. So that's how it's going to be in the future. We're going to have better biomarkers to choose who to treat and predict who's going to relapse and who's not.